everybody. My name is Timothy Trespass, and I am a targeted individual. Uh, I just wanted to speak briefly about this place behind me. Uh, as you can see, there's like all these shipping containers piled up, uh, two or three high, and um, it's this woman. Her name is Lisa, this black woman who owns this lot. It's a pretty big lot all the way from the corner to wherever, but I, I did finally manage to speak with her once. And, and this is what I wanted to talk about, is the fear and anxiety that these people have caused, the, the traumatic, you know, post-traumatic, uh, continuing traumatic stress, whatever you want to call it. I have gone from being an outgoing, you know, say what I want and get it done and, and, and motivate people and, you know, from magic. I had the magic thing, you know, I was blessed. And then now I, I'm so afraid to even ask people for help, uh, to talk to anyone and tell them, you know, I mean, I can tell my story, but when it comes to real uh, something, you know, like my life, like, you know, can you help me make my life work? Can you, anyway, with her, she's just a nice lady, she's getting old, and they're screwing her around because they want to buy that lot out from under her and get her out of there. So they're sending all the, the fire department and the building department and all the other places, and they're all asking her for money under the table, and she doesn't want to pay, and whatever, there's all kinds of stories she told me, but... She says she's trying to sell the lot, which is why she's not going to rent uh, a space to us. She used to run the, the flea market and the storage place or whatever, and that's how she wound up with all this stuff. She claims she has another lot up the way on Meserol. And, and for some reason, I just can't get this thing out of my mind. I keep, you know, I, I don't know, maybe I saw it somewhere on the internet or... You know, people are managing to get these storage lockers, these metal shipping containers, and build homes in them. Insulate them, put in the toilet and the water, and the, you know, the rainwater collector and the solar thing and the, the, the batteries and the whole, you know, giving you a, a house of power with, with heat and a little wood stove, whatever, however you do it. And, you know, I keep, I have this fantasy that somehow some kind person will will follow the, the will of God and, and be grant us some, you know, here, you know, I have this lot, you can stay here for free or for, for less, you know, for a few hundred dollars a month and, and no one will bother you. You know, it's tucked in the back of this industrial area and whatever and and no one will mess with you, and your stuff is all locked in this big metal box, and you live in there and nobody bothers. And that's what I want. Nobody bother us. You know, I don't want to have to keep moving. This, this, this to us on purpose. The forced relocation. Oh, sorry. Um, and I, I would recommend to people who are new to this targeting, stalking stuff and trying to figure out what's going on and who say to themselves, gee, maybe if I move away from this place, then these people won't stalk me anymore, thinking that it's a local uh, phenomenon. And so far, in almost every case, if the reports are true, of course, the people have claimed to me that moving did not change their targeting. In fact, in some cases it made it worse because now they were outside of their comfort zone. They didn't know anyone or anything. They didn't know who was friend or foe. And, you know, the, the trauma of moving to a new, a totally new place under stalking and mind control and all the other stuff just, just can really be a lot of additional trauma. So, after being forced to move, you know, 10 times in the past three years. Granted, the last two years have been, you know, longer. We've been almost a year at each one of these places, but 
you know, having to move, pack everything you own and, and take it apart and move it and, and we're just getting too weak and too sick to, to do it with all the energy we had before. So we gotta hire people to move it all. It's like four or five hundred bucks. And of course, ugh, packing it and, excuse me. I just saw a bird's wing ripped off the socket with no meat on the bone and blood. Some some predator had had a meal of this poor creature. And you know, we see this in nature. We see this cyclical food chain. And why is it that we think we're at the top? <laughs> why is it we think there's nothing that feeds on us or or? herds, uh, farms, us, you know, but I digress, the, excuse me, whenever I go out in the cold, the mucus thing begins again, some kind of more gallons reaction, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, driving us to move, moving in, and the next day they tell us we gotta leave, or people threaten them, or, you know, we were told we had to get you out, or, what, you know, whatever, all this stuff, the, the trauma. You know, you move into a new place and they throw more bugs on you, you're fighting that for months, then they tell you to get out. It's, it's over and over and over. So you never have a sense of safety, you never have a sense of home. You never have a sense of this is my safe zone, my castle, my fortress, you know, my whatever, just a bed to lie in while you're recovering from the sickness, the horrible sickness, you know. And eventually, people fall victim to this and die. I know three, three people personally killed murdered by these people and a few others just heard of and know of and you know so yes it's an eventuality for all of us but to hasten it to hasten it by you know and look change is inevitable in life but too much change will pop your fuses and I don't want to pop my fuses you know what I mean I also don't want the marshal to come and take all my shit and lock us in the street. You know, we've got to act before that happens. So finding the balance between the um, what you need and what they're willing to give you, finding the balance between the, the terrifying fear that tells you, run away, get away, get away, and the, uh, you know, the the... I'm going to stand my ground and, and, and these are my rights and I'm going to fight for them until it takes me down. You know, somewhere in between those two extreme stances to the left and to the right is the middle pillar. The pillar of uh, moderation. The pillar of uh, balance. You know, and somewhere between those two, two sides is the correct choice. Um, so I've been walking around, I mean, you can see, look in this place, construction everywhere, man. It's like within a four block radius or something, there's 20 construction projects. I just walked by five houses in a row that had their, being gutted and, and, you know, so. This place was great for a couple of years and now it's becoming impossible. Usually we would get a room within a month or two. It's been four months I've been actively trying on and off to get a room. You know, not every single day, but as many as I could, despite the sickness and the freezing cold and the massive storms. And so far we haven't found anything. Usually we find something, we grab it, we take it, we move in. But she's so, Petra is so hurt and shocked and upset and, you know, she doesn't want to, I don't know, she knows and I know, but, you know, it's so hard, man. And yeah, we wish we could just pack up and, and go to Happyville, you know, some place where everything is better and, you know. That's why I'm talking about freaking shipping containers, because 
they're big in metal and <laughs> different rules apply, you know, I just, I have this, this fantasy that somehow, this wish, this hope that somehow we will find someone who is A, sympathetic to our human needs and our cause, B, has a strong foundation in, in Christ and spiritual, you know, compassion because these mind control thing they attack everybody who helps you and tells whispers in there oh they're bad people they're they're pedophiles they eat children they're drug addicts they they steal cars and beat old ladies up with dog bones now, I don't know what they tell these people but they tell them something and if that doesn't work they threaten them and then you know and only someone who's really strong can can say no you know they're people too and I'm gonna do my best to to help them get what, you know, protect them. Finding somebody like that is, is you know, almost impossible, you know? How, how, how brave are people these days, you know? So, uh, anyway, I just keep thinking that maybe somehow I'll find this and this woman is, she owns this thing, she's gonna sell it, she says she has another one, she seems kind of cool, whatever, but... For some reason, every time I go near there, I'm terrified to, like, say, Hi, excuse me, remember me? And I'm sure she'd say, yeah, how you been, blah, 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 she's really nice. And they manipulate the... the I don't know what it is, whether I'm being manipulated, whether it's just... The traumatic, you know, whatever, the long-term effects of this, or... But I just can't seem to bring myself to, to speak to her. I go over there every time I see her sometimes, and I'm just afraid. I never used to be like this. It's... It's difficult to watch yourself deteriorate and realize what's happening and not be able to do much about it. Um, anyway can tell how scattered I am by just listening to my speech. Um, anyway, that's the story for the moment. I wanted to share that with the world and get it off my chest. Uh, thanks for watching. I pray for everybody who's in this same horrible situation. We need to help one another. Pray for one another. And God bless you all. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. Blessings and peace.